Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, today we'll be reacting to Ishmael in the Bible and in the Quran by Dr. Shabi Ali. I don't really know if it's Shabi or Shabi, guys. Currently, but let's get straight into this. Dr. Shabir, when I look at the story of Ishmael, I see that Ishmael is given a very prominent place in the Quran and a not so prominent place in the Bible. You know, so so tell me about Ishmael, how he's viewed in the two traditions. Yeah, in in the Quran, Ishmael is not mentioned by name so often. The, the son of Abraham, Abraham is mentioned, and uh, Ishmael is uh, thought to be the son that is mentioned in the story of the sacrifice. Elsewhere, he is mentioned by by, by name. Mm -hmm. For example, in the 19th chapter of the Quran, uh, where God uh, shows that he was a righteous person and God um, gave him prayer and, and charity, and he commanded his uh, progeny to do the same. Um, in, in the Bible, uh, the stories are told more extensively about all of the prophets, and the Quran only needs to refer to those stories elusively mm -hmm. uh, to bring out the lessons uh, that could be brought up from these stories following the Quranic line of thought. Um, uh, but even in the Bible, um, the story of Ishmael, compared with others around him, um, uh, seems to be diminished, um, especially in comparison with his brother Isaac which is uh, a, a curious phenomenon because uh, Ishmael was the firstborn son of Abraham, according to the biblical narrative itself. And, and so you would expect him to have a greater prominence, but he doesn't. The prominence shifts to Isaac, who um, comes to be known as the ancestor of the Israelite nation. And um, uh, Ishmael, by, by comparison, is said to be a great person. And that he will be, uh, he will have many descendants, mm -hmm. um, uh, but he will also be a wild donkey of a man whose hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand will be against him. Mm -hmm. And in contrast, in the Quran, Ishmael is uh, Ishmael in the, in the Islamic tradition is seen as sort of the uh, ascent, the ancestor, right, the ancestor of the Prophet Muhammad and the yes. Muslims, yeah, many yes. Arabs. So in Islamic tradition, Ishmael gets a uh, large mention. Yes. And uh, Isaac, not so much mm -hmm. mentioned. So as as if the the Islamic tradition, in a way, counterbalances and, and uh, fits nicely in with uh, the Jew Judeo-Christian tradition, um, uh, showing the, the, that the, the prominence that both sons should have. Mm -hmm. Now, it seems as if Ishmael's story within the Quran begins with um, Abraham leaving, leaving them in some sort of barren land, which appears to be Mecca. Right? Yes, in the 14th chapter of the Quran, Abraham prays and says, God, I have settled my descendants in a land uh, that is not cultivated, uh, so please you provide uh, for them and uh, uh, cause the, the hearts of people to be inclined towards them. Uh, but he says he's leaving them there for a purpose so that uh, they would worship God. It's as if uh, there is an attempt here to um, plant a new place of worship. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm using a terminology here from Christian um, thinking in, in that, you know, somebody may say I'm planting a new church. Mm -hmm. You go, they go to a new area where there's no church and then they, by their very presence there, they're going to be, they're going to establish a Christian community. So that's what Abraham wanted to do. A church, yes. Mm -hmm. So Abraham was planting his descendants uh, in a barren uh, region where people would not have come otherwise. Uh, so that in that area, uh, God can be worshipped as well. Mm -hmm. How does that story in, um, appear in the Bible? Uh, in, in the Bible, it takes on a different coloring in that uh, it, it, the, 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 the story goes that uh, Ishmael was born for us first, and when he was uh, about uh, 13 years old, um, Sarah became pregnant and gave birth uh, to um, Isaac. Isaac. Mm -hmm. So Isaac was the second son. When Isaac was being weaned, probably he was about two years old, um, uh, Ishmael was uh, uh, laughing at him or playing with him. Mm -hmm. uh, the term Yetzchak in, in Hebrew is ambiguous. It could mean either way. Um, if it's taken to be mocking him, then this is more likely to explain uh, Sarah's uh, behavior because Sarah uh, then um, it says, drive out this slave woman and her son. I won't allow her son to inherit along with my son. Um, and it's in response to this that Abraham then takes his uh, wife and uh, Hagar 
uh, and and uh, her her son and and leaves them in the barren um, area and in fact it is said that God told Abraham listen to your wife mm. uh, which uh, in a way it's a good commandment listen to your wife but in this specific uh, um, circumstance uh, one struggles to see the morality of it like mm -hmm. how would it be uh, right to leave this woman and her child um, with only a, a small supply of water, which eventually will, will run out. Mm -hmm. It seems like they would be destined to die in that situation. Yes. It, it, would, it would seem so, had it not been for miraculous in intervention and God sending an angel to uh, make, uh, give the provision. Mm -hmm. in the so Islamic in tradition. the Islamic tradition, there's, that, there's the zamzam that arises, right? Yes. The water. Is, is that in the Bible as well? Uh, yes, okay. there, it's in the Bible. And um, in the Islamic tradition, the well is referred to as zamzam, and that well continues to uh, provide water to this day. Pilgrims from all over the world uh, gather to Mecca and uh, they perform the sacred rites at uh, the what is called the Masjid al-Haram, uh, which is a mosque around the Kaaba. Um, and uh, there is the well of Zamzam. And uh, where it is, it is related in Islamic tradition that uh, Hagar was running between two mountains, two, two hills, mm -hmm. you, you might say, to uh, use them as vantage points to see if she, maybe there's a passing caravan, anybody with some water uh, to quench the thirst of her child. Uh, Muslim pilgrims to this day, men and women, uh, traverse the same track, and uh, men in particular are encouraged to run uh, between two green lights that mark the place where in Islamic tradition it is said that uh, Hagar uh, ran between the two hillocks. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that sacrifice, the great sacrifice which we hear about in both the Bible and the Quran. How are the stories similar and how are they different? Uh, so uh, they're similar in that uh, in both the Quran and the Bible, Abraham um, uh, goes to offer a sacrifice to God, and this sacrifice uh, happens to be his very son, whom he loves so dearly. And that is uh, a proof of Abraham's great faith. He's not withholding from God even his beloved son. Um, now, some uh, differences arose between the Muslim and Christian retelling of this, and, and of course the biblical retelling. Uh, in, in, in the Bible, uh, we read in Genesis chapter 22, verse 1, that God said to Abraham, Abraham, take your son, uh, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and offer him as a burnt offering um, to God. Uh, burnt offering is a reference to the way in which the animals were sacrificed at that time. They mm -hmm. were not only killed, but also the, the flesh was burnt okay. as a burnt offering to God. Um, in the Islamic tradition, when a sacrifice is done, an animal sacrifice, that is, uh, human sacrifice is totally prohibited in both traditions. Um, but when Muslims offer an animal sacrifice, we eat of the meat ourselves mm -hmm. and we share it also to family and friends um, because it is stressed in the Islamic tradition. In the Quran itself, it says that the flesh and blood of the sacrificial mm -hmm. victim does not reach God. It is your piety that mm -hmm. God is concerned about. Mm -hmm. So we can benefit from the meat itself as a provision from, from God. It's just this dedication going through this ritual that God is interested in. Mm -hmm. So I understand so, there's, some diff there's some confusion about, first of all, which, which son it was, right? Uh, well, this is the big confusion, actually, that, you know, was it Isaac, was it Ishmael? Muslims seem to think it, it, it was Ishmael, right? Uh, uh, many Muslims think that, yes. Uh, in, in classical Islamic uh, interpretations of the Quran, we see both opinions. We see some scholars, and it seems that this was a very early opinion, mm -hmm. that uh, Muslim scholars like uh, at Tabari, for example, uh, favored uh, the view uh, that uh, Isaac was the son to be sacrificed. And that, of course, uh, follows from knowing what the Jews and Christians mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. were saying about this. Uh, later Muslim scholars, such as Ibn Kathir, argu argued on good grounds that uh, the son to be sacrificed was Ishmael, looking at clues within the Quranic text itself. And uh, I'm convinced by that reading of it, especially as described by Imam Asayuti in his uh, Al Hawi Lil Fatawi, his collection of, uh, of Islamic verdicts. Uh, so, taking the son to be Ishmael, uh, that, that, that has become the majority view, and it makes uh, good sense, uh, especially when we see the wording in Genesis chapter 22, verse 1, where it says, Take your son, your only son. Because the only time there was an only son is when Ishmael was the only son. Mm -hmm. uh, for for some 14 years uh, and then 
Isaac was born, and now we, Abraham had two sons. So one might say, well, only son Isaac could mean that uh, Abraham has banished the other mm -hmm. son, and there's, uh, theoretically there's only one son. But the Bible uh, does confirm that Ishmael was still the son of Abraham, uh, and that's how the Bible refers to him, not uh, as, a, you know, as someone of lower status than a son. Um, uh, so he was the only son. Mm -hmm. Now, it is interesting that uh, in the biblical narrative, uh, Abraham says to the son, we're going to offer a burnt uh, offering, and the son says, but dad, where is the animal that we're going to sacrifice? And uh, Abraham is a little bit uh, um, evasive in answering the son. Uh, in, in the Quran, the story is from the start that Abraham sees a, a dream that he's sacrificing his son. And then he says to his son, I see this dream. You tell me, what do you think about, about this? And then the son says, Ya abatif al insha Allah min So in the 37th chapter of, in, of the Quran, where uh, the son says, My, my father, uh, do what uh, you. Uh, are uh, commanded and and you will find me God willing to be one of those who are patient mm -hmm. so the son uh, in the Quranic narrative knew th knew what was going to happen and he wanted to be part of that and he was deliberately allowing himself to be sacrificed uh, in this way it's a very that, moving account it, it, is, describe, it yeah. is and it shows the communication that should uh, take place between father and son especially when we're about to do something for God um, we want to all do it together as a family everyone in cooperation shows the willingness of the son and then of course as the story now unfolds in both the Bible and the Quran God provides the animal to be sacrificed instead and that uh, demonstrates that God does not want us to sacrifice our children that God does not demand human sacrifices and in fact in the Bible itself it is very clear that human sacrifice is prohibited and it is the animal sacrifice that remains in the tradition this has remained firmly in the Islamic tradition uh, especially um, uh, seeing that uh, the, the Arabs thought that they were descendants of uh, Ishmael. They wanted to maintain that uh, tradition. And in the Islamic uh, faith, uh, this becomes uh, a cornerstone of our uh, Eid uh, celebration. Mm -hmm. Lots more we could talk about, including the fact that uh, Ishmael with Abraham built the Kaaba and that they were in Mecca, which is not something that's not described in the Bible. But, you know, we have to end it there. So yes. thank you for your time, Dr. Shiver. You're welcome. But I only think, like, to be honest, as a Christian, I believe that it was Isaac because remember, I don't know why he didn't talk about the, the promised son and, like, Isaac being a miraculous child and stuff like that. But, like, if you read the Bible and you want to take it for what it does, you see that Isaac was, I'm not saying, see, that is the thing. People are going to misunderstand me. I believe Ishmael was the son of Abraham, like, he was the first son, like he is the first son. But like there are different verses in the Bible that say that show that well if I the first son does not mean I wouldn't say it does not mean like you are you are the son, but like does not mean because you're the first son, you are the one that has been called by God. But that verse clearly shows that God didn't send Abraham to have sex with Hagar, but his wife asked him to. And remember when the angels came to Abraham and Abraham was hospitable and they told him your wife would bear a son. And she laughed and she conceived and at her age and she gave birth. But like, as it was the miraculous child, based on the Bible, the Bible says it was Abraham who went there and the Quran said it was. I feel that is where the beginning of the confusion started. To be honest, but guys, don't wait to talk about this video. Thanks to like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys.